Welcome to part 21 in this unit tutorial series. And in this video, uh, I'm just going to show how to have a networked animation. Uh, so for this, uh, go ahead and get the Max Adventure model. For me, it's just excellent for what I'm trying to do here. And I'm just going to uh, import it. So you just go ahead and download and import it. It's a free model. And it's actually very good despite it being a couple of years old. And uh, once it's imported, I will it's come into the come into Unity. Uh, I just need to change it to uh, humanoid so that it can be used for mechanim, and it'll already be all right. All of the bone structure is uh, just right for mechanim. Uh, then I should just go to the animation and uh, just set a couple of things because uh, for networking we don't use a root motion. Well, I'm not going to anyway. Uh, so I'm just gonna. Well, it's already zero, zero, zero. That's why you bake uh, the pose. You bake it to stop it, uh, stop your model moving. And in this case, actually, I don't need to, but I just, sh I should set loop pose. I should at least set that so that the animation loops uh, smoothly uh, each time it comes around. But in this case, uh, this, uh, these animations are actually set up very well and they will actually loop uh, correctly even without setting it. Well, at least I think so anyway, but uh, it doesn't hurt. Might as well set it. Uh, there is a bit of motion here, so I just need to set that off. Okay, uh, just apply. So I'm just going to use three animations. There's no strafing animation here, nor a walking backwards. Uh, so we can't really implement any of those. Uh, so it's going to be a really simple uh, animation set. I do show how to have uh, uh, walking backwards and strafing and all that in my S2 uh, tutorial series on Steam, but that's for the old networking uh, system. Uh, all right, so those are the three animations I'm going to use. I need to make uh, my own animator controller now. Uh, so I'll just quickly do that. So let's call it my uh, controller. Or may not, uh, I should call it player controller. Yeah, that's what I should call it. And I probably will just make a new folder as well. And just call this one my controllers. And drop this one in there. All right. And uh, get to work on it. So I'm going to just make a, uh, a blend tree. Go inside. I'll just call this one motion. I'll just call it, give it a name, motion. Uh, it's going to have three animations, uh, so three motion fields to add. And I'll go ahead and uh, get those right now. So that was idle, uh, walk, run. And uh, oh, yeah, that's right. I just better set the parameter. So I need to make a new parameter. I'm going to make a float. I'm going to call it speed. This will drive the animation. And then just say that that's what I'm going to use here. And uh, let me just check that. Yep, okay, so that's fine. Okay, so now that I've got my controller, I need to uh, set up the player prefab. So drag it back into the scene. And uh, just bring in the new uh, the model itself, just drop that in. I'll take off the animator on this object uh, because I'm, it has to be on the root, uh, on the parent object, uh, because that's where the network animator will go. So that's why I've removed it there. And I'm just going to drop it in. All right. And for the capsule, uh, I don't need that anymore. I also will just turn off this cube thing as well. I'll just get out of the 2D view um, just so I can see uh, uh, the model properly and maybe just reduce the size of those gizmo icons for now. All right, that's better. Uh, what else do I need to set? So coming back here, yep, I need to add the network uh, animator component, and it'll automatically give me an animator uh, component as well. Now I need to set the, the controller. Uh, so going to my controller, I'll just drop in the player controller. It needs an avatar as well. Uh, so going to the model, uh, there it is, max avatar, drop that in. And now the network animator needs to know uh, what to uh, uh, follow. Now it's not going to work straight away. We do have to do a little bit of scripting, very little, not much. 
Uh, so that should be it. I'll hit apply. I need to edit the first person controller script. So this has to be done uh, because, uh, well, oh, well, I just hit play. Well, obviously nothing happens. It's not going to animate because uh, this it's not set yet. Uh, so let me go and do that. So first person controller will obviously have to set that uh, speed float, the, the float speed parameter by code. That's how it has to be done. So I'm going to go look for where the git access is uh, set. So this is the Unity script. Uh, this is their script. And in here, I'm just going to say, um, I'm just going to put a comment for myself, added for unit tutorials. And all I'm going to do here is, uh, I guess, something really, really simple. I'm just going to say, um, float anim speed, I'm just going to make up the float is equal to uh, math, uh, math f dot absolute vertical. All right. And then I'm going to uh, get the component, the animator that's uh, attached now to the player animator. And I'm going to set the float, set float. And the name of that float was uh, speed. And the value to set is anim speed. All right. And yeah, I'll just convert those line endings. OK, save that. And, and now when I uh, hit play, just uh, start the game, get in. All right. So in single player now, it's just animating. Of course, there's no sideways motion or anything like that. Uh, of course, it just it just strafing like because oh, I don't have those animations. It's quite simple. Really, what you would do, uh, really for a uh, a proper uh, setup, you wouldn't use one D blend type. You would use like a two D freeform Cartesian, and you would then set your uh, strafe animations and your running backwards and uh, your diagonal. If you have a diagonal animation, then you would set that too um, in in that and just set up your heart and use drive it with your vertical and horizontal parameters. So then instead of speed, I would actually call this vertical and I would have another one called a horizontal or something like that. Uh, anyway, it's not complicated. You just have to have the animations. All right. So now that I've got that, um, it's actually not going to work. So if I uh, build it. Just, uh, yep, unblock that. And if I jump in here and join the game, right, so you can see up there it's not animating uh, at all. And for good reason, because uh, it has to get told what, uh, what parameter to actually sync across the network. So to do that, it's a pretty simple uh, bit of code that uh, we have to write. Uh, and uh, I'm going to make a new script. Uh, no, sorry, I'm not going to make a new script. I'm just going to edit an existing script. What I should do actually is to uh, just get rid of this from the scene. Uh, it is all applied, so just delete that from uh, the hierarchy. Uh, and then come to player network setup. So this is an old script. Uh, one thing I want to do is I want to just hide any renderers that are showing. So that's the first thing I'm going to do, just get rid of the renderers. So I'm just going to say renderer. Yeah, it's going to be an array. I'll just call it rens uh, is equal to get components in children. And those components are uh, the renderer. And I'm going to say for each renderer ren in rens, then oops, what have I done there? Uh, in rens, uh, and then I'm just going to say uh, ren uh, dot active uh, uh, ren dot enable. Sorry, ren dot enable is equal to uh, false. OK, so that'll get rid of the renderers. Next, I need to access the uh, uh, network animator component. Uh, so uh, this component here. So uh, when it's running, they, well, they'll, it'll look for, it, it wants you to enable the parameter for syncing. So that's what we need to do. So what I'm going to do is uh, very simply, uh, I guess, get component. Yeah, that would make sense. Get component uh, network animator. 
and it's going to be a set parameter auto send. And the parameter index is zero. It's the first one. There's only one there anyway. And yes, the Boolean of whether I want to have it auto send. Yes, it's a true. Now, this isn't enough. This is going to happen on the local player, right? That's OK. But it also has to be set on the client end as well. So that game object, it also needs to be true. Otherwise, uh, if it's set true on only the local player and the client is not true as well, it's not going to receive anything and the animation won't get synced. Uh, so I need to uh, then bring in public override pre-start client. So this is the perfect place to set this up. And I will just copy this code here. So now the client game object will also get this as well. And uh, pretty sure that's it. OK. So I'll just, uh, just double check. What are the errors? Are there any errors? Nah, should be OK. All right. Just quickly, just uh, double check that this is all right. Yes, it's disabled. That's good. Good. Let me just move into there. What am I looking at? Nah, just nothing. OK, fine. Now I'll just build and run. All right. OK. And there's the player. And there you go. He's animating across the network. Looks silly, but well, there you go. It is working. It looks silly because there's no strafe animation or anything like that. OK. And I was just thinking, actually, I might, I might do something else as well. I'm going to try something else as well. Uh, back here where I have the sync rotation, I'm thinking I might just disable that because it was looking a bit funny uh, with the character, and and I'm not using the I'm not I don't have that cube anymore sitting inside the scene anyway, so uh, I might do something else. I might actually actually sync that y axis, so just the y axis. And uh, that might actually look really good now. And I'll just build that again. So I'm really just reverting to to what Unity provides with respect to syncing uh, the uh, motion and now the animation as well. OK, I'll join the game. Yeah, and that looks actually really good. Yeah, I should really uh, oops, hide that uh, UI. That's better. That's much better. All right. So, okay, that looks uh, that looks actually pretty good. So just jump on the block here. Uh, also get this guy up on top, so they don't get eaten by the zombies. And then just jump back out here, so that now I, I can just observe what's happening. And there we go. Let me actually let me get the let the guy get the, uh, taken by the zombies, eaten by them. Let's see what just happens. It should he should just get hidden. Good. I should be able to just respawn and he just appears again. So that's uh, that's actually that's pretty excellent actually. So there you go. That's uh, that's that's how you um, uh, sync the animation across the network using the inbuilt uh, network animator component. You just need to uh, just tell it by script that you want that parameter to get synced uh, across the network. Now that's pretty much it. And it's actually a very good thing that it's uh, like that, because if you had a pretty complicated uh, uh, animator controller with a lot of parameters, you might not want to sync all of them across the network. So with a setting like that, it's actually very good that you can choose what you want to send across the network. All right, anyway, so I hope that helped you. And uh, thanks for watching.